The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji. Welcome to The Pulse. I'm your host, Andy Blake. If you're just joining me for the first time, welcome to my new show where throughout the year, we will profile interesting guests, SMEs, tourism and attractions, travel, food, including local culture. So fasten your seatbelts and prepare to take flight with me right here on my TV. On the show this week, we are setting sail on Captain Cook Fiji's Reef Endeavour for a fabulous three nights cruise to the Asawa and Mamanuda Islands. From his dairy farm in Tailevu, we meet Andrew Compain and we visit the chiefly island of Mbau to discover the wear, a traditional fish basket. But first, my Talanoa with one of the popular local figures on social media, Dr. Lely Darling. This talented and gold medalist doctor shares insight into her personal and professional life, including any association to the song Rossi Ni Chumbe Nongi by the talented artist from the group Via Nitembara. Take a look. Bulubinaka Fiji, Bulubinaka the world who might be watching in and tuning in today. I'm Lee Darling and um, I'm a medical doctor, even though sometimes I forget that. I live in Nandi and I work in Nandi. I run a medical clinic and I'm originally from Tumbola Kamba in Lao, the Vonireo clan, with maternal links of Asu to Namwana Kandavu. Yeah, so that's me in just a little nutshell. Exactly that. You'll notice that I've transitioned up a little bit to Lay Darling. You know, that's just to make my name more gender affirming, as we say, in the transgender community. I no longer, funnily enough, no longer identify with my biological name for obvious reasons, because it's not gender affirming, especially us going from Lao. It's, oh God, those names are terrible. <laughs> so I prefer Lay or Darling or just Lay Darling. That's it. That's my preferred name. And also my preferred pronoun, since I'm a transgender woman, is she and her. However, I'm not really fanatical about that. I uh, know that the transgender movement is very fanatical about pronouns, like we actually demand that. I think that's really reversing the societal norms. Uh, in terms of gendering a person, that right belongs to you, the other person, not us demanding you call me this. And what's going on right now, which I totally disagree with, is when we demand that you call us a pronoun and everything in you realizes it doesn't match, um, we will take you to task, we will attack you, we will cancel culture you, deplatform you. It's getting very violent, it's getting, getting very uh, fanatical, authoritarian, almost totalitarian. So, yeah, I, I worry about that bit of the transgender movement. So, you can gender me any way you like in whichever way that is affirming to you so i'm okay so that's usually how we introduce ourselves these days you know uh my gender pronouns are such and such so i'm she or her or he it doesn't really matter two words very humble you know i've never been one to shy away from my humble upbringing or according to our modern um department of statistics survey poor you know because, you know, that struggle of a life uh, has molded me and shaped me to be who I am today, you know? So, yes, uh, so that's basically most 90% of Fijians grew up in this very humbling uh, background. But the fact is, we never called ourselves poor because we were always happy, we have our extended family. And, you know, happiness is basically wealth that a lot of people don't realize that. So we have that in Fiji, despite the fact that officially we might be poor in terms of our family income or expenditure surveys, as it's been done recently. 
So yes, so um, I grew up initially in Tumbola, Kambalao with my grandparents who were just farmers. But I've never known hunger in my life. There's always food, there's always seasonal foods, there's always ocean fishes and you know, the bounty of the ocean and the land, you know? So farmers are rich in everything. They might not have money, but they're, they're never gonna be hungry. So that's something that we should not uh, look down upon us in Fiji because you know we are living now in an era of social media materialism and we tend to compare ourselves and get depressed but when you just look at what you have already at home learn to be appreciative of that and uh, and as long as you're happy and you're fed and you're not hungry that's it you're rich yes so basically that and then when I was in uh, class four then I moved to Lautoka totally different world again very humble um, upbringing there with my parents who are there. So yes, I would say that is my upbringing. If you call that colorful, well, maybe it is colorful. So yeah, very, very humble. I've always thought, eh? now it's children these days are fortunate because they have social media, so there's a lot of exposure. Eh? During our time, uh, we never used to get exposed to things. And, and I don't blame a lot of people who grew up in very, uh, like maybe in the village, They've never seen a doctor, they've never seen a lawyer, so they will have no perception of what these jobs are. So um, I've always realized that. So exposure is very important in children, but now with social media, a lot of kids are surfing the world on the net. Eh? So for me, you know, as a child, as you probably know, when relatives come or our parents will sit us down and ask us, so what would you like to be when you grow up? I don't know where that doctor came up from. So I've always been saying as my favorite answer, doctor, 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 even though I didn't really know what it was all about. Then uh, later on in childhood, I had some medical uh, issues where I was face to face with doctors in Lotoka Hospital. First of all, I was terrified of them and then I was in awe of them, intrigued of them, and then it sort of solidified that. I said, okay, so this is what it's actually about. So I've always had that from then on. Eh? But the funny situation is that I nearly lost my way, no thanks to my father. You know, as a transgender LGBT child growing up in that era, my father had nothing to do with me. And it's not surprising, you know? He didn't see anything in common with me. So really, he did not know me. I think he was like a deer caught in bright lights when suddenly I passed form six with some flying colors. And then he realized probably at that moment, Oh my God, this one knows something, you know? So as I was about to leave for Foundation Science USP from home, he took me aside and just told me, I just couldn't understand it. It really messed, nearly messed me up. He said, I want you to do engineering because he worked for FSC. He probably was exposed to engineers and he probably thought, okay, I better tell this one, focus on something more achievable. I think doctor is too much, too high. And as I said, he really, really does not know his own child, you know? So when I went to USP to enroll, I had to enroll in technical drawing. And the last, because of engineering, I was a pure science all throughout high school, passing with good marks, biology, chemistry, physics. In foundation, because of that advice from my father, I enrolled in the technical drawing because that's the main subject for the engineering side of the courses. And oh my God, Andy Blake, I struggled because the last time I did basic technical drawing was in Form 3 in Natambua High School. And all the way then I haven't done anything. So the high class kind of technical drawing that is matching the university level, I didn't do it all. I was lost. I was absolutely lost and lucky for, by the grace of God, I managed to get a C at the end of it and that made me pass. But I had physics on that um, course and chemistry, but not biology because they had to re replace that. I did well in all of those. So end of that year, next year will be where you need to go, whether it's medicine or any degree. I applied for an engineering scholarship, overseas engineering scholarship, and then I left for my Christmas holidays. I was in Drekenuai, that's uh, Honorable Rombuka's village. We're actually related. I was there for Christmas and, you know, swimming and frolicking around with the village uh, children when a phone call came in another house. And somebody was saying, they're looking for, is it really, is it really? yeah, whoever that name is, yeah, I've mentioned that name. <laughs> and I said, yeah, that's me. So 
It was. It's a beautiful Mrs. Tavai, always very friendly. I think it's probably the late Mrs. Tavai now, PSC scholarship officer. She was on the line. And she said, hey, Merry Christmas. Um, how are you, Lely? I said, I'm fine. Okay, this is Mrs. Tavai from PSC. Good news and bad news. Bad news is that you didn't get the overseas um, engineering scholarship that you applied for. But how would you like to do medicine? And I said, oh my God, yes, I've always wanted to do medicine. I think she was taken aback. Always wanted to do that. Why did you apply for freaking? <laughs> and then that's how I got back into the medical course. Oh my God. You know, social media is all very nice. I love, I'm addicted to social media. But sometimes the attacks that you get and all those kind of comments, this makes you want to cry. The one that made me laugh was, you know, there's a hit song going on right now by Vieni Tambara, Rosi Nichumbei Nongi. And despite the fact that I specifically said on one of my live um, podcasts that this is almost my song, almost would mean in plain English, it's not my song. The entire world of social media and Fiji just kept on saying it's my song. And funnily enough, as I was going through social media, I've been attacked and vilified for a song that I said it's not my song, you know? And I said, oh my God, I couldn't understand that at all, you know? After I said it's not my song, it's almost my song, the whole world kept on persisting like it's my song and attacking me and vilifying me in the process. You know, certain segments of society, as per usual, I guess that would be a funny one. I am. That is my song. That is our song. When Lengu Baby initially broached the topic about the song, I was terrified. That was my very first emotion. I was terrified because I could really see how controversial it would be. And, and then after that, after that initial feeling of fear and trepidation, I then realized or tuned into the, the meaning behind it, you know? I said, wow, this guy is probably very serious about me to want to actually make a song about me, you know? Yes, so Lengu Baby is my partner uh, and he's from Nandronga and so he's the one that came up with that. Okay, so that will be to correct some commentators on Facebook who I saw said that I created the song on my own, okay? so. Actually, the songwriter and the lead singer of Yeni Tambara, uh, Bill Ratuba, was in charge of all that. So he wrote the song, he put, it, he put everything together. So all he asked of us is to just provide our story, what actually happened, how we met, and all those kind of things, and where we originally from. I had absolutely no idea about the word Chubainongi until I saw the lyrics for the first time, you know? Suffice to say, I absolutely hated that song. I absolutely hated it initially because I said to Bill Ratuba, you know, can you insert some of the Wasa Wasa Vakaviti, Fijian idioms into the song, you know? Because at that time, Bingo Miao has just come out. And Bingo Miao was just full of idioms that many of us don't even understand as Fijians, you know? That, that song that Natalie sang a cover on, beautiful Bingo Miao. I said to him, I want it a little bit like that. Use some of those words, you know? When he initially showed us the draft, oh my god, it was, to me, it was boring, it was lackluster, and it had no idioms whatsoever. I, I didn't hold back. I feel sorry for Bill now. And if Bill is listening in, I'm, I do apologize, Bill Rotuvo, for my behavior. So I said to him, I find this absolutely boring. This is not good enough, you know? You need to change this. You need to change this, Bill. It's boring. Where is the things that I'm asking for? Where, is the, the, where are the idioms? Bill was quite collected because he could have sworn at us and left it at that. But he said, okay, I don't want to boast. So please, could you bear with me? Let me show you or let me 
sing the song first. And then if you still don't like it, then we will decide what to do. But let me sing the song first. So I said, okay, whatever. So I was not really holding out for any changes because I know a boring lyrics will be a boring song. But when the song came, oh my God, it was a, it was just a, what, again, a draft song. It was not like it was sung now. Yeah. Now they've inserted uh, spaces, they've inserted music, but it was just a draft. The very first few lines, Andy, I fell in love with it. The chorus, absolutely crazy over it. And then the following other lines that talks about my island of Tumbo, La Campbell, Love, Wani Real Clan, and all those kind of things. I was just absolutely madly and deeply in love with the song by then. And I couldn't really tell Bill, sorry for what I've said. So I gave it to Le Lengu Babe. Can you tell him? Apologize for that. <laughs> so that's how the song came out. But the other thing that I didn't like about the song is the rosy bit. When I saw the rosy bit, I said, please, how many roses are we going to have in Fiji? It's getting ridiculous. I don't like this at all. But, but there's only one rosy bit to <laughs> I guess so. So I think I was overruled there because now when the song came up, because I said to Lingo Baby, I don't want that rosy. Change it. Change it to something else. The line was still there, so I guess they both liked it, and that's why they left it. So it was largely Bill Rituva's uh, composing and uh, writing skills that is all to do about that song. I didn't write it, so if people think that I wrote that song, I wish I could write songs, but I didn't. It's hard. It's hard to hear and to read the negative comments, the hatred, the bigoted comments. It's hard, but it's expected of Fiji. You know, I've been in this country, this beautiful, beautiful country, uh, amazing in many other ways for all my life, and I know what to expect. And that's exactly why when the topic was broached by Lego Baby initially, I was terrified, because I knew. I knew of the negative fallout that's going to happen, and it's still happening now. You know what? Um, one week after the song, I shared the song with my denial. One week later, in that beautiful yellow chamber. That yellow chamber video has been shared around like, I think I just saw it when I came, 19,000 uh, views, uh, 19K views and about 340 shares and a couple of other hundreds likes and comments. So, and they're still doing it. Every now and then, today, a five or six notifications. This one has shared your post, this one has shared your post. And I said, oh my God, it's still going on. So yeah, so the negative uh, fallout is expected and uh, it's everyone's right to hold an opinion whether it's bad or wrong uh, or, or good. I will not hold that against anyone but you know we're all hoping for a change in our society. A change that I think will never happen until another hundred years will pass, you know? Because you know we are not an educated society. Many of our people have never traveled the world. When we become international citizens, travel to other countries and realize, oh my God, this society is working and they have this and they have that and they have that. So I guess when our people do travel abroad, the mindset will very will change very, very quickly. It's the fact that we are all boxed into our little Fiji all the time. That's all we hear, that's all we see. We don't see any better, we don't know any better. And that's how these negative perceptions and negative attitudes will still continue, you know? So I'm hoping for our children and their children in generations to come, when they get more and more and more enlightened, things will go for the better for the LGBT community in Fiji. But as I said, not in the next hundred years. I don't see that happening. Yeah. So it used to be my favorite song, Rosini Chimbe Nongi, um, but I've moved on. Um, there's this uh, favorite of mine right now, Tavaka, that's by, oof, I don't know, um, something Munia. I love that song. So yeah, it's, it's a rolling thing because every now and then, every few weeks, a new hit comes, you know, and our, our talent is, is amazing. For obvious reasons, I'm just passionate about transgender advocacy, you know, um, especially using my own life as the billboard, you know, and the, the very fact that I share my love life on social media because it will have that reach, it will have that exposure for people who've never seen probably what a transgender woman looks like, you know. So I use my life at that walking billboard of transgender advocacy. So I'm very, very passionate about that. 
because there's a great need is obviously um, people hate us without even knowing us you know that's something uh, really really weird you know uh, when they don't even know you and they absolutely hate you and want you dead I, I really can't rationalize that so I'm hoping that with my life and with um, the good and the bad it's still publicity. Any publicity is good publicity. So I try and walk that life. I know it can be terrifying some days, uh, but I'm so happy again that we live in Fiji, where people, even though they vocalize very nasty words, very hateful and violent words, it's very, very rarely acted out compared to some other countries. So that's something I'm thankful about in Fiji. So I would like to take this moment, Andy Blake, to thank Fijians who are supportive, who are supportive of LGBT people, the LGBT children, who are affirming. I would like to thank them because sometimes we focus on the negativity and we don't look at who are the positive ones, you know? We do have a lot of positive supporters, parents, family, friends out there. No, a total strangers that they're just enlightened and supportive. So yeah, thank you very much Fiji for that. And, um, and as I said initially, I don't hold anyone's opinion against them. It's your human right to hold whatever your opinion you have. You know, I've always been inspired by hard work, uh, dedication, authenticity. But more recently, you know, I've been very, very inspired by romantic love. You know, wherever I see it on social media, I, I really go Google Gaga over it because I know how difficult it is to attain true love, you know? Um, and now we live in a society of gadgets, of swipes and swipe right, swipe left and clicks and likes. The availability of partners are never ending. It's there, you know, it's ready made. So good luck to someone who might find real love these days because it's very difficult to tell. Before, when you are faced with problems in your relationship, you work on your relationship. But now it's very easy for people after a fight with your wife or your boyfriend just to get on your phone and go to the second choice, you know? And, and that opens up the doors to infidelity and affairs, uh, destroys family, destroys everything. So it's really because it's difficult to attain, you know? I sometimes look at my own life. It's very, very difficult to find true love. Even for a normal person, it's, it's hard. But for trans people, it's even more difficult, you know? So that, I, I tend to love that now to the illusion or allure of real, true love in a romantic sense. I guess the best advice, Andy, especially during the social media era, is to choose your battles wisely. Not all battles need to be fought. Not all battles need to be won. Because you will just exhaust yourself out. Because there's so much negativity, especially on social media. And if you go and respond and fight to every comment, not only it will destroy your, your emotion, uh, emotional well-being, it will perhaps turn you into a very nasty person, you know? So I guess that's a very good advice. Choose your battles wisely. Things that need to be addressed, you address it. But there are many, many other things you can just skip over and flip over and remain happy. A lot and the black, but many of them will get me arrested, so I will not be able to share any of those. I'm sorry. I've had enough of the sun, the surf, you know, beautiful Fiji, you've done all that, the party circuits, the fashion circuits. Now, whenever I come home from work, I love reading my favorite book, Facebook. Just spend it in my nice, comfortable bed. Because social media has a lot of content. There are some books there, there are some very educational content. It's not all about meet and greet as many of us use it for so yes whenever i am alone i just uh, spend it in bed so it's total catch up on my relaxation and rest and just spend it on social media yeah that's all i do now so i do a lot of fruits and vegetables a lot of fruits a lot of juicing a lot of fresh water drink a lot of water every day it just keeps your skin supple now to work on the skin Cleanses, cleanses, cleanses. It's very important. Many of us don't really realize the importance of cleanses and the harmfulness of normal soap. Normal soap takes away like just, like a sandpaper and just rubs away natural oils that are supposed to be there to keep your skin supple and hydrated. So have a good skin wash that's very uh, mild. 
morning, evening, I normally just start off my routine with a good wash of my face, all right, with a facial wash. And then after that, I've got an array, an array of uh, vitamins and, and supplements to take, you know, um, magnesium, selenium, uh, fish, uh, fish oils with uh, vitamin D, vitamin C. So a whole lot of arrays of vitamins that I know. It's easy for me as a doctor because I can always pick and choose. So that's usually my routine. So I'm wearing the Royal House of Morsio today. I'm just excited about our local uh, fashion house for a few reasons. Number one, it's more relevant to us, you know, and it's available to us. What's the point of fawning over Swarovski or whatever overseas fashion when you can't even get them, you know? So I'm a huge fan of our local uh, designers, uh, Kuiviti, House of Koila, Happy, Pia, and I try to use their brands, uh, fabric at least, and I make my own clothes, yeah? So that's a new trend I'm into, just get the fabric. Before I used to buy their ready-mades, but now I just get the fabric and get my tailor to do it in whichever way I like, you know? So that's what I'm excited about, local fashion. Mm -hmm. My personal style, I'm wearing it right now. As I said, I'm more into the uh, local Itauke woman couture, which is the chamba. I'm just falling in love with the chamba, you know? So whichever material I get, I would love to do a chamba on it, you know? So it, it takes me closer to my roots. It takes me more, makes me more authentic to where I live and who I am, you know, as, as a woman, really. So yeah, and it always has to have a bright ticket taking and earrings. That is the combo that has to be there all the time. <laughs> it's my happy meal. <laughs> it's a challenging profession in all spheres of it. During undergraduate level, when you're studying to, to be a doctor, it's very hard work, extreme hard work. And we, when you do come to work as a doctor, it really takes a lot out of you and it demands a lot out of you. So it's a very challenging um, uh, career path or occupation. But it can also be very fulfilling. Um, it can be life-changing. So if it's money and riches that you want, you can easily find it in medicine. It depends on which specialty that you choose. Plastic surgery, surgery in itself, they are the uh, money-making side of medicine. So, yes, but we are going through a very interesting phase in Fiji where we are getting too many doctors and you've noticed that the government has cut down on the MBBS scholarship. So that might be something that a lot of students these days need to take into account because there is an oversupply of doctors locally. According to the government at least, that's why they've limited the MBBS scholarship. But it, if something that you want and it's your calling, go for it, I will say. I'm Dr. Leigh Darling, and um, you're watching The Pulse with Andy Blake. Talented doctor and popular social media influence, Leigh Darling, having a Talano session with me at Sailors Beach, Fiji, in Wailolo Beach, Nandi. Great stuff indeed. Time for a short break. Up next, it's my three nights postcard from Captain Cook's MV Reef Endeavor in the idyllic Yasawa and Mamanuth Islands. You're watching The Pulse. The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji. When it comes to three night cruises, Captain Cook Cruises, Fiji's Yasawa and Mamanuda Island Discovery Cruise should be at the top of your list. 
This cruise departs Port Ndanarao and sails out to some of the most majestic islands I think exist in Fiji. Captain Cook Cruises Fiji's three nights cruise to the Asawa and Mamanuda Islands departs Port Denarao. And for pricing options, visit www.captaincookcruisesfiji.com or you can ring their Nandi office on phone number 670-1823. Explore the most romantic of the Mamanuda Islands such as Monoriki and Sacred Islands and Sawailau Caves in the Yasawas. The cruise includes all meals, snorkeling, paddleboarding, shark feeding, glass bottom boat tours with a marine biologist, 24-hour tea and coffee and onboard gym. You can also choose scuba diving and relaxing in the onboard spa. When it comes to Captain Cook Cruises Fiji, the experience begins the moment you step on board the boat and when you hop off to enjoy islands like this. If you watch the movie Castaway with Tom Hanks, then you will be familiar with the picturesque sights of Monoriki Island. Monoriki Island is just one of the idyllic stops on the three nights cruise. You will also sail to Sacred Island, the fabled birthplace of Fiji, as well as discover the legendary grandeur of Sawai Lao and the famous limestone caves, another natural film set for Brooke Shields' film Blue Lagoon. They always say that your cruise is made that extra special by the friendly and hospitable crew on board and one person that embodies the true essence of Fiji and its happy people is the onboard hospitality manager, Elistoni Vimbosi. <laughs> Are you always this happy on every cruise? Oh yes, I'm always happy. Uh, who cannot be happy in this land of where happiness finds you? And on the best cruise in Fiji. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So Elistoni, what do you love the most about your job? Um, making people happy. That is what I love the most because uh, from different ethnicity, different background, the work that they do, stress life that they live, and then when they come to Fiji for a cruise, uh, the, the thing that I always look forward to is making them happy. And when they leave us, they become sad because they're leaving us and they want to come back to us to see us be happy. That'll be me when we get off this uh, Yay, cruise. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Sawailau Island, the home of the world famous Sawailau Caves. Now there's the snorkeling, scuba diving and shark feeding. But the wondrous experience of this entire cruise, I think, is swimming inside the cave lagoons. So let's go check it out. And true to reputation, swimming in the Sawai Lao Cave Lagoon is a hit with the guests. So what was the experience like? 
It is an absolutely thrilling experience. Listening to the legends and the history of the Sawailau Caves on board, it is an absolutely amazing experience that my husband and I have just shared. What do you think, Mari? Definitely. Um, I reckon whoever wants to come to Sawai Lao Cave, I would recommend them to come. And uh, family, friends, it's a good getaway just to get away from the hustle and bustle. Great. And your overall experience of the three nights cruise to Yasawas and the Mama Nuthis, what has it been like? So this trip is exactly what Martin has just mentioned, to get away from the hustle and bustle. And we are just relaxing and unwinding on this trip. We are enjoying the beautiful weather around us. The hospitality of the crew has been amazing and the food is absolutely divine. Yep, agreed. The food is delicious. <laughs> Now if you haven't experienced a three night cruise with Captain Cook Cruises Fiji, I encourage you to do so. You will discover some of the most idyllic islands and fall more and more in love again with Fiji. The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji. Welcome back to The Pulse. I trust you're enjoying the show this evening. Before the break, our Eat, Stay, Love segments profile on Captain Cook Fiji's three nights cruise to the Asawa and Mamanuda Islands. Definitely one of the best cruises in Fiji. Now from the Asawas and Mamanuda Islands to the province of Tailevu, we meet Andrew Compain, one of the local dairy farmers who stars in our homegrown segment this week. Meet Andrew Compain, a local dairy farmer whose dairy farm has been supplying fresh cow's milk to Rewa Dairy for well over 40 years. The farm began with Andrew's late dad, a Frenchman, whose family history dates back to the construction of the Naili Lili Catholic Church in the province of Rewa. I'm, uh, my name's Andrew, Andrew Compain. Uh, this is our family dairy farm. I'm the third generation now. Uh, I've been doing this for, we, be, we came here at about 40 years ago. So I was born here in Osori. Uh, and, uh, from 12 years old, I left school and I've been milking cows ever since. Well, I'm located in uh, No Sorry, Naitalasese, and Bau. This is beside Nambua, Waikete. There's two dairy farms that we have. Uh, they've closed up, one has closed off because of TB. So it's just this one. Yeah. 
We were, dad and mom came from uh, Londoni, up in Tailewu. They moved to uh, Dawa, uh, Waimaro. Then from Waimaro we moved here. We started off with a 52 acre property and we grew and now we got 162. So this third generation now, uh, very hard, hard work because you cannot stop. Uh, hurricane, everything that, everything gets thrown at you, you got to deal with it. You know, there's no complaint. You cannot complain, you lose. Market ready. Ah, uh, man. It's just a milking every two days, seven days a week, all year round. I mean, that's the hardest challenge we face. Hurricane, water cuts, you get mastitis, you get, like I said, there's no complaint. You cannot complain. Uh, you had to give up uh, the bad friends. You had to stop drinking. You had to stop smoking. You had a, because it's so hard that you don't have enough energy for other things in life. It's all here, right here, cow. <laughs> well, we start our day at four in the morning. So we will come down here, milk, then I go back home, I gotta milk my goats. Then it's kids, it's fencing, it's calf rearing, it's checking fences. Two o'clock in the afternoon, we're back here again milking. Just making everything, cows in the paddock, milk's cool, you gotta make sure everything's done, your water's good, and then you day off. Uh, it kind of blessed me in a way. Because I, I have my kids with me, no school, so they've been helping me full on, hands on, every day. So it's a blessing for me, no problem. What advice is, uh, man, you got to work hard, man. You got to run it and you cannot have workers run your business. Because workers sometimes, you know, they don't milk the cow properly, you start getting mastitis, you start losing milk, lazy. You have to hands on yourself. As an owner, dad made it by himself and his children. We did not have people work for us. So the advice is you have to do it yourself, 100%. Playing rugby somewhere, France or New Zealand. I've spent two years there, rugby, it's a beautiful place. Yeah, rugby. I am Andrew Compain, you're on The Pulse with Andy Blake. This week in our Culture Explained, we meet Mr. Chemesa Ratumaitavuki on the chiefly island of Mbau, who talks about the ware, a traditional Itauke fish trap. Take a look. The last of the Lasakau clan on Bau Island with knowledge of how to make the ware, a traditional Itauke fish trap, Mr. Chemesa Ratumai Tavuki talked about his youth and how he was able to create up to two fish traps in a day. Today, the 89-year-old can still skillfully make the traps in a week. The traps are made in different sizes depending on the type of occasion that takes place on the island. Kita The ware 
is made from tender mangrove stalks, each measuring up to a meter in length that is split into four parts, one of which becomes the binding that holds the structure together, a process known as itali or kolo kolo. The structure of the ware is similar to the shape of a barrel that is completed with a small door-like structure. It is environmentally friendly and during the construction of these traditional fish traps, women are not allowed to witness the process as it is considered bad luck. And that wraps The Pulse this week. I trust you enjoyed our show, my Talano with Dr. Leli Darling, our Yasawa postcard with Captain Cook Cruises Fiji, our profile on dairy farmer Andrew Compain, and Mr. Che Mesa Rotumai Tavuki on Bow Island. I look forward to your company again next week right here on Mike TV. For comments and questions, send us a message via our Facebook page, The Pulse with Andy Blake. Remember to like our page and give this video a big thumbs up. You can also watch this episode again on demand via our MyTV YouTube channel and our Eat Stay Love segments on board Fiji Airways in flight soon. Enjoy the rest of your evening and stay safe. Nisa Mademanda. The Pulse with Andy Blake, presented by Coca-Cola in association with BSP Life and supported by Fiji Link, Fiji Airways and Captain Cook Cruises Fiji.